Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in our church and to the single parents. Happy Father's Day. You notice that uh, most of the team in Buryatia are women. Because uh, most of the men are drunk with vodka and they are in rehab centers. And many times the work that is done there is done by the ladies, so we take our hats off to them. And uh, some of you that are here, uh, your single parents, uh, most of the single parents in our country are women, and uh, you do the job of a mom and a dad at the same time. And uh, we just want to uh, honor you today on Father's Day. Hallelujah. Well, let me read uh, verse 12 of First John, and uh, then we'll uh, dissect it a little bit, then have a cup of tea. Is that okay? I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. The word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Father, we bless you, honor you today. Touch our lives and bless our hearts. We thank you for your goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Many times in our lives, we need to rest. And uh, if you uh, read the scriptures, we shared it on many occasions. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That is rest. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That is rest. He leads me beside the still waters. That is rest. He restores my soul that the whole of the psalm is about rest. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the old. That is rest. In everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request be known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your heart and mind in, in Christ. That is rest. Whatever we do, we ought to rest. We can warfare in rest. So long as we understand that we are supposed to be resting. All you that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke it is, is easy and my burden is light. That is rest. The anointing breaks the yoke. That is rest. And we need to rest. Our souls, our minds, many times clutter up and we get stressed to the limit for nothing. And sometimes we don't know what we've got. And many times we become our own worst enemy. We need to learn to rest. Now the Bible tells us, <laughs> I, I read uh, First John and I preach it something different. The Bible tells us, let us fear that a promise left to us of entering his rest, that many of us will not, will come short of it, will not get there. Which means rest is given to everyone but whether you get there or not, it's not his fault. But the Bible says, if you're going to be afraid, be afraid that you won't enter his rest. And then it tells us, if you're going to labor, labor to enter that rest. So our labor is to enter a rest. To rest in his grace. To rest in his power. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was, that is rest. 
I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails. That is rest. His mercy has never failed. From everlasting to everlasting. That ever, you weren't even born in that everlasting. And you might be there in that everlasting. When everything that has ever been done that is bad is going to finish being bad, but there will still be mercy. What is that? That is rest. His mercies are from that everlasting to that everlasting. Before there was any sin, there was mercy. After every sin is committed, there will still be mercy. That is rest. And when we are sick, we can rest. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Why do you need to rest? Because he's dead. His father. When you watch your grandson uh, sleep, you watch him. What is in your heart? It's compassion. God does that. You sleep, he neither sleeps nor slumbers. So while you're sleeping, snoring your head up, maybe having, having a nightmare because he had too much spaghetti, he's watching over you. Because he has mercy, he's a father of comfort. Hallelujah. Have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll come back to 1 John. <laughs> Maybe next Sunday or the Sunday after. All right. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from the Father and from His Son. And then it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. The Father of mercies. What did they call out? Jesus, Son of David, have mercy. And the mercy they asked for was healing. And got it. Because his mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God's a good God. God's not Samoan. God's God. He's a good God. Some Samoans are not good. Some Maoris are not good. Some Europeans are not good. But God's good. When R. Roberts popularized that God is good... A lot of clergy, a lot of the church said, he can't do that. So he asked them, what do you mean I can't do that? They said, you, know, you know what they said? It makes it so easy for people to get to God. Give me a break. God came. We didn't go. He came. But that's kind of the religiosity that sometimes holds us bound. That even though the doors are open... Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting door, and this King of glory will come in. Who is this King? The Lord mighty in battle. He's this King of glory, and he's come in. And Hallelujah. And many times we don't know. And like, like God said to Hosea, my people are destroyed because of their ignorance. They lack knowledge. If they would understand what I've done, many of them will not be destroyed. But you're not destroyed because the devil is stronger. The devil is no stronger today than he was at Eden when he tempted Eve. Got no more power added. But God is a God of all power, all grace. And then you've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Then you got all the angelic, and then you got the church. Give me a break, or give God a break. Hallelujah. I hope you never die. What a good card. The best dad of all. I hope you never die. But death is not the ultimate tragedy. 
Death, death is not the ultimate tragedy, even though death is man's most terrible enemy. Like, death is so final. <laughs> and somebody said, hello, are you there? And no, I'm not. I've gone home. Leave me alone. What's more terrible is living and not knowing why you, why you live. Now, some people are buried at 90, but they died at 19. Then the rest of their lives, they just exist from year to year to year until we bury them. And the greatest dilemma of humanity is living and yet not living. Are you okay? Yeah. So John is writing to a family. I know I've got two minutes, but I'll make it five. <laughs> he's writing to children, then he's writing to the fathers, to the parents, and then he's writing to young men. And he said to the children, your sins are forgiven. And if you read the book of John, he writes, you know, he said, we write and I write. We knew him who is from the who was from the beginning. We actually touched the logos of life. He said we touched him. And now he's the only one that is now alive. He's the father of the church. The others have all been martyred, and here he is an elderly man, and now writing as a father. Today being Father's Day. And he says, children. Now if you, write, you, write, you go right through the scriptures, it's a story of a father and his family. Yeah. It is enacted naturally through us, but it's, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The family. So John is writing to children and he said, Hoy, your sins are forgiven. And sometimes as children of God, because we are so acquainted with our own fallen nature, we think that our sins are not forgiven. And when we sin again, we say, Oh, I do it again, and I do it again. And you're more bound to the sin than you're bound to righteousness. Yeah that comes by Jesus Christ. My very sincere respect on behalf of Fear and I to a dawn at the passing of a Jim, a great man. Loved him very much. I'll come down from the pulpit and he'll take my hand like this in his hand. He'll put my hand in the middle of his door. He said, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he's writing to the fathers. Now fathers, let me say this to you on Father's Day. You carry a responsibility and an authority that often you don't even know. And you are more attacked by the devil than most people know. So you've got young boys because after he talks to the father, he talks to the young, young boys, young, young lads. I write to you, uh, young men, because you've overcome the wicked one. Now, as far as I know experientially, most young men have not overcome nothing. And so from a very young age, they are assaulted by life, assaulted by by the enemy, and many times they're struggling trying to get their heads above water. Are you okay? So they try to get what only a father can get, can give, and they can't get it because sometimes there are no fathers around. Are you okay? 
So he's writing to, to children, fathers, and young men. But he, he said to the young men twice, you've overcome. And then he said, because you have the word of God in you, you are able to overcome. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. The word of God will give you strength. And you're going to be able to overcome. Jesus gave us that example. When he was tempted in the wilderness. Jesus quoted the word. The word may not look very glorious to you. But the word is the word. The entrance of his word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. His word is settled in heaven forever. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my, my path. His word is a two-edged sword that pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of bone and marrow that lay bare the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word. Now many young men will rather play their games than read the Bible. Read the Bible. Yeah. Eat the Bible. Yeah. Let the Bible dwell in you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. Get the word of God in your heart. Don't leave the word of God in the book. Get it out of the book and put it in your heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then you overcome. But I want to talk about fathers... I've just taken five minutes, take another five minutes. <laughs> but you have a role in the heart of a young man and a young woman that nobody else has. Most of the wounds in our society, and when I say wounds, I'm not talking about you, you know, you got cut by a machete. I'm talking about internal wounds. Most of the wounds in our society are father wounds. And most of the children are looking for a father. Because many of them get a girl pregnant and take off. And they think they're macho. I want to get them and smack them in the face. They are irresponsible. So... The poor mothers are raising a fatherless generation and they want to be father and mother to these kids because the guy that impregnated their children or impregnated them just takes off instead of staying behind being a father. Your greatest role as a father is to be a father. Hallelujah. Now, I know there is another side to the story. Some people don't want to be fathered. They think they're clever. You try to educate them, and uh, they don't want to be fathered. They don't want to be told. They don't want to be counseled. But the teacher at school is not the father. The policeman at the police station it's not the father of the children. You're the father. You do your job. Raise them up in the ways of the Lord. When they get old, they'll not depart from it. Now, they may run away and think that uh, you're an extension of the Antichrist, but if you will do your job, hallelujah. Let's do the best that we can. Especially in these days when there are so many Children that, are, that have no fathers. Now, the Bible says God is the father to the fatherless. And many times we think, we, we, well, God's my dad. <laughs> That's nice. But what God does is, if you're fatherless, God will make absolutely sure that there are men around you that he will father you. When you say God is father to the fatherless, it's not a vacuum thing between earth and heaven where you're trying to reach out to this God. God will put men around your life that will be fathers to you. And you ought to find those men and relate to them. They will teach you. 
They will train you. They will tell you off. They will discipline you. And you can grow having fathers around you that will do the job that your dad did not do, your biological father, maybe because he passed away or maybe he left. Are you all right? And when you look at God the Father, he's the, he's the, uh, he's the initiator and the destiny of everybody. It is of him, it is through him, and it is to him are all things. Jesus said, I came from the Father. So he was the originator, and I'm going back to the Father, and he's going to be the destiny. And every father has that role. You are the beginning and the end. And if you realize that, that you take the place of God in the life of somebody, then you're going to live circumspectly so that the person that you train can look at you as we shared in the last several weeks, that men are not just men, women are not just women. You become a pattern for somebody else to imitate, a pattern to follow. Now the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, Imitate those who by faith and patience receive the promise. So people are looking at you. If you do your job, they will imitate you. And fathers are role models that can be imitated. And even though you may not say anything to somebody, their observation of you becomes a coaching process where they imitate your life because you're a father. You know, the Bible says, I write to you fathers because you've known him who is from the beginning. Who is the beginning? Be beginning with you, but you know him who is from the... And our, our job as fathers is to know God for our families, for our church, yeah. for our community, to know him who is from the beginning. Little children, your sins are forgiven. Young men, you've overcome. But fathers, you know him who is from the beginning because in a sense, you are the beginning and you are the end in the life of somebody else. Good preaching, Pastor. Amen. And many times we let the teacher father our children. No, the teacher is not the father of the children. When the children get into trouble, the counselor is not the father of the children. You are the counselor, the mighty God, everlasting father. Now, I know that's talking about Jesus, but that's what we imitate. Follow me, Paul said, as I follow Christ. Now, the father will always prophesy to their kids. You may not think so, but that's what they do. That's the role that they do. We talk about uh, Abraham blessing Isaac, Isaac blessing Jacob, and Jacob declaring prophetically. And you as a dad, you may not think so, but if you know him who is from the beginning, you become the prophet in the life of that kid, life of that daughter, in the life of that son. And you can declare their future. You're a prophet. You're a priest. You intercede on their behalf. You offer sacrifices on their behalf. The reason you offer sacrifices and live a sacrificial life is because of them. Are you okay? God so loved the world that he gave. Who gave? The Father gave. Who loved the world? The Father loved the world. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you, I go prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. But it's my father's house. When we pray, who do we pray to? Our father which art in heaven. Up to now, you haven't asked anything in my name. Ask and it shall be given. Ask the Father in my name and he'll do it for you. Yeah. The Father is the destination. The Father is the originator. And the Father is the coach. You, re you read the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. It's about a father and their children. Attend to my words. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. My son, attend to my words. They are life unto those that find in a health to all their flesh. But it's a father talking to the sons. A good sons make a glad mum. Talking about children. The whole of Proverbs is a family book. It tells you about godly wisdom on how to live. Avoid the pathway of the glamorous woman. All she wants is your money, and all she wants is sex. But there is a, a mother, a woman. There are two women in the book of Proverbs. One's a harlot, the other one's a, a church. Are you all right? But it's a family book. And if you read that, it gives you wisdom on how to live, said uh, how to treat your neighbor. Are you all right? How to treat the boundaries of your dwelling. Don't, don't move the peg that your dads have put in place. Don't try and extend something that is already there. Are you okay? I won't talk about that because otherwise I'll detour again. But I like these detours. It helps us. Are you all right? Say amen. amen. So the father prophesies and the father is the priest. You look at the life of Abraham. Abraham prophesied and God prophesied through him. I'll bless you and through you New Zealand will be blessed. Yeah. Through you shall all the families of the earth, some all be blessed because of you. The two Yatua clan will be blessed because of you. The Mapuhi tribe will be blessed because of you. Amen. But God prophesied through a man. Yeah. And then he prophesied to his son. And then his son prophesied to his son. And then his grandson prophesied to his grandson. And what he did, the Bible says the reason, one of the reasons he tithed or gave was for Levi's benefit. Now Abraham never met Levi. He was his grandson, but he never met him in person. But the sacrifice he made was for the sake of Levi in the future. The reason I do what I do is for the sake of Molly Rose in the future. Are you right? So live in that kind of a way where you prophesy. Not, if you're not words, your life, your life itself is a prophecy for your children for the future. Now they may go astray, but one day they're going to that way. Like the prodigal son who went astray, and one day he came to his senses. Most of the young people will come to their senses, and when they come to their senses, what are they going to say? In my father's house. When they come to their, so you live as a father, you live, I'm just talking to fathers today because it's Father's Day, I'll talk to mothers on Mother's Day, but you live as a father for the benefit of your great, 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 great grandchildren because they may go astray, but one day they're going to come to their senses and they're going to look back at their daddy's house and said, I'm going home. Everything I ever wanted is back in father's house. In my father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. So he is a, the father is a prophet. The father is a priest. The father is the king. Now, that does not mean that you rule like a, an austere dictator. When, you know, a father as a king rules in grace. 
The Father loved the world. And when you do that, and you do that as your job, as your role as a father, you prophesy, you worship on the behalf of your family, and then you rule in the grace of God. Those children will one day, oh, my daddy, I hope he never dies. Why? Because you do your job. Father to the fatherless, if you're fatherless today, you're blessed actually in more ways than you know. Because God will put around you so many men of different characters that will help nurture you so that you may know the Father. And then the Bible says, if a, be, be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So all fathers down here, if, if you all fail, just go upstairs. Because the one upstairs is not failed. And if you're here this morning and you know that you've, your father or whoever has failed you, then you can come afresh to him who yeah. loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth will find everlasting life. Fathers impart security, identity, and a sense of belonging your self-worth you have a tremendous responsibility and when you do your job it's got to be a great world I love you Lord for your mercy never fail all my days I'm held in your hand from the moment that I wake up Lay my hand, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. You're here this morning. Your father or whoever it is has failed you. I want you to stand. Because I want to pray for you. If you're here this morning, you're a father, and you know we have made a lot of mistakes, I want you to stand too, because I want to pray for you as well. You don't stand, I'll just pray for myself, but I'm standing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we, we come to the God of all comfort and the Father of mercies to lay our souls bare before you, Lord God. And the wounds that we carry, we bring them to you right now. Father, that comforts us from all our pain and heals us from all our diseases, forgives us from all our iniquities, rescues us from destruction, fills our mouth with good things that our strength is renewed like the eagle. I pray, Father, for these dear ones that are standing. Some of them carry wounds from fathers in the past. Thank you that we can come to the Father of Lights to receive your healing touch. Some fathers are standing, Lord God, because we haven't done a job that is good as you expected us. Sometimes in our own ignorance we make mistakes. But help us, Lord God, to be good fathers to our children, to carry the responsibility that you have given to us. Lord, to instruct our children in your ways, to be a blessing, to be a nurturer and a sustainer, that, Lord, that uh, our children will find security in our hearts. I pray for those that are orphans that are standing Lord, even those that are not orphaned, but carry an orphan heart, we pray, dear God, that you will minister to them and touch their lives. 
We pray for our fathers, those that have run away, or we pray, dear God, for your forgiveness, your blessing upon their lives. We pray for our dads, those that may have passed. Help us to carry the great memories that uh, we have of them. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come to a Father who knows all things. Lay bare the thoughts and intents of our hearts before you, knowing, dear God, that your touch, just a touch from the Lord, is so real. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Hallelujah. My soul is made whole because of your touch. We thank you today. You're a good God. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.